So we're continuing our discussion of effector mechanisms that are triggered after complement activation. So complement becomes activated by any one of the three pathways, uh, lectin, alternative, or classical. Um, that leads to complement fixation. And complement fixation can lead to any one of these effector functions. In this video here, we're going to focus on how complement, when it becomes uh, activated, can lead to inflammation. So recall that there are uh, complexes that form during complement activation called C3 convertases and C5 convertases. There are multiple versions of the convertases, which we've covered in past videos, future videos. Um, but for now, we're just talking about the fact that when a C3, C3 convertase is formed and is active, uh, the C3 convertase will cleave C3 into C3A and C3B. And we spoke about what C3B does. C3B can covalently attach to the surface of pathogens. That's a good thing. That's complement fixation. Um, when C5 convertases form, what's a C5 convertase? It's an enzyme complex that will act upon C5, cleave C5, into C5A and C5B. And we talked about in a previous video how C5B initiates the formation of the membrane attack complex that will help destroy pathogens. But we didn't talk about C3A and C5A. Like, what do they do? Well, it turns out they are very potent uh, inducers of inflammation. So we call these small proteins anaphylatoxins because what they will do is trigger an inflammatory response. C5A is the more potent of the anaphylatoxins. So when complement becomes activated, often that's going to lead to the production of C5A and C3A. So what are these proteins going to do? Well, let's introduce the fact that there are some cells in the body that have receptors for C5A and C3A. So C5A will bind the C5A receptor, C3A will bind the C3A receptor, and that's going to trigger cells to change their function. Um, what function? Well, we'll see shortly. So here I've drawn behind me a blood vessel, right? So in the blood vessel, you find cells, the red blood cells, obviously, but I'm not drawing them, but you also find white blood cells like neutrophils and monocytes. If you recall, never let monkeys eat bananas. Neutrophils, very abundant in the bloodstream. Monocytes, also very abundant in the bloodstream. Um, in our tissues, we have cells like macrophages and mast cells. So I've drawn them outside of the bloodstream in tissues. Uh, I've got these little dots around. What are those? Those are complement proteins. Remember, complement, you're making them all the time. There, you know, you got C5, you got the C3, you got factor B, factor D. They're in your plasma, blood plasma. They're in your interstitial fluid. So you got complement proteins, you know, in those compartments as well. Now let's say there's an infection. There's a pathogen detected and complement becomes activated. Well, when complement becomes activated, we know we form the C3 and C5 convertases that will cleave C3 and C5. And now we're going to have the production of C3A and C5A. Let's see what they do to help clear this infection. They're going to introduce, they're going to induce inflammation. Let's see how. First, let's talk about well, one of their target cells, endothelial cells. If you recall, blood vessels are lined with endothelial cells. They're a type of uh, simple squamous uh, epithelial cells. They have receptors for C5A and C3A. So when uh, these anaphylatoxins bind their receptors and endothelial cells, they're going to trigger the endothelial cells to change their tight junctions. So those tight junctions between the cells are not so tight anymore. We've introduced this concept in a previous video on inflammation, um, referring to vascular permeability the uh, ability of blood vessels to become leaky. And when they are leaky, when they're permeable, then substances in the circulatory system, in the bloodstream, in the plasma, can enter 
into the tissues. So what substances? Fluids, proteins, like complement proteins. So these proteins, right, we got, we got, we're bringing in more complement proteins into the site of infection. We're bringing more fluid to the site of infection to flush these pathogens into the lymphatic system. So we've got some inflammation going on. We've got a uh, tumor or edema or swelling because of increased vascular permeability triggered by the anaphylatoxins acting upon endothelial cells. Uh, monocytes and neutrophils also have receptors for C5A and C3A. When uh, those anaphylatoxins bind those cells, what do they trigger? They trigger, they help trigger those cells uh, to help migrate them to the infected or inflamed site. So they help recruit cells into the uh, inflamed tissue. And recall monocytes, when they enter in the tissues, they will also differentiate into either macrophages or dendritic cells, both of those being uh, phagocytes that help destroy or phagocytes host the pathogen. So anaphylatoxins can trigger uh, recruitment of immune cells into the inflamed site. Mast cells, what are mast cells? They are granulocytes. They have mast cells on their surface, receptors for C5A and C3A. What's going to happen when the anaphylatoxin bind these receptors? Mast cells are granulocytes. These granules uh, become released from mast cells. The granules contain substances like histamine, which are very powerful inflammatory molecules. Histamine, which we'll talk about in a later video in more detail, triggers vasodilation, can actually change the diameter of blood vessels. Blood vessels become wider wider diameter, increased diameter, vasodilation. What does that do? Remember about inflammation. Um, when blood vessels vasodilate, more blood can be brought into the site, more fluid, uh, more immune cells, more plasma, more complement. So we have the two more. We have the vasodil vasopermeability. Now we've got the... Um, uh, Rubor, redness, more blood. We got the calor, heat from the blood. Um, and that is going to help get the uh, infection neutralized, right? By bringing in more white blood cells, bringing in more blood, more plasma, more immune proteins, such as more complement proteins. What else can these anaphylatoxins do? They can do a lot here. Well, macrophages have receptors for anaphylatoxins. Well, what is that going to do when the anaphylatoxins bind to the macrophage uh, uh, receptors on macrophages? Well, that will actually help supercharge, if you will, your macrophages. It'll improve their function. Uh, macrophages work well. They can work even better when they are exposed to anaphylatoxins. So the example I'll give you here is that when anaphylatoxins bind to their receptors on macrophages, that increases the production of the CR1 protein. What's a CR1 protein? If you recall in a previous video, we talked about opsonization. CR1 protein uh, is the complement receptor 1 protein, which will bind to C3Bs found on the surface of a pathogen. So the macrophage actually will opsonize even better once the macrophage is exposed to anaphylatoxins. So these are just some mechanisms. These aren't all. But these are some mechanisms by which the formation of these anaphylatoxins, these small fragments of C3 and C5, specifically C3A and C5A, can bind a myriad of targets to induce an inflammatory response that are going to help uh, the body clear the infection by a variety of mechanisms, uh, some of which were act, like I said, upon the blood vessel to increase the vascular permeability and uh, vasodilate the blood vessels. And those are two real um, common hallmarks of inflammation.